Welcome to the definitive Beyond All Reason Cortex tier list. We know Cortex for being the brute force faction in Beyond All Reason. Stronger units, more range, more DPS. Maybe a, a little heavier, maybe a little less maneuverable, but we like to call it big framed, uh, not so much clunky. So uh, I am going to be rating all of the unit as as a effectively diamond late beyond all reason player myself um and someone who very much enjoys frontline and just uh putting as many units on the field as possible and and using them actively which i know is not necessarily a popular style but i think it gets the job done so we're going to be rating everything that doesn't involve water because i am a bit hydrophobic myself uh, as uh, many players are, except for the very few who are very interested in it. But maybe, maybe in another video. So like, subscribe, and prepare to dis- or dislike. You know what? Just dislike until I say something you think is smart, and then maybe turn it around. But your definitive, very- I've never found a game that- even- even compared to StarCraft, there's so much it depends. But a few things are definitely- uh worth um going through so s tier will be pretty much always good as long as it has something to work with something to shoot at a tier is almost always good but definitely can be the wrong choice in some situations the same goes for all units b is if used what well, b i think b is going to be like if you can micro it or if you find the right scenario it can work but it's not like a default c is mostly trolling uh probably not and d is uh players will probably report you if you build too many or use them too poorly so the tier one and tier but i also have the beyond all reason the amazing site over here in case i need to check anything um to justify whatever argument i'm making so the anti air bot very solid relatively cheap even basic anti air does a great job of shutting down early bombers I like it's not you don't always need it because all uh, air is very fragile early on oh wait that's the manticore Ooh, tier two i'm sorry that's t2 you see i already oh for one either way um well bring in the the they're both in the a tier like i think they're really solid uh eh, honestly i'd probably move the tier two and tier down a bit it's incredibly expensive and usually you're better at, like you don't need too many of it it can help but it's kind of a spot defense but the tier one anti-air can cover you pretty much unless they have things like dragons or a ridiculous mass of bombers restart the interest start it from the top i can't be wrong well you know getting their units wrong is probably the most wrong i could be by just literally Anyways, grunts are S tier. Grunts are amazing. Grunts are part most of the reason I play Cortex on many maps, because uh, grunts outrange pawns. Very simply, uh, they don't have the DPS, but they're cheap. Only 36 metal compared to 48 of the Armada pawn. They can run you over. I uh, build them quick. Like they are the premier. They're the zerglings, except they can shoot from range. So pawns are more like so there's no real qu they're very good. They're very good. Marines. Ducks. Okay, so the duck is actually uh let me let me go over here real quick. The duck is surprisingly strong. Even though it's supposed to be it's an amphibious unit where if you see it, there it is. It also looks like a duck. So the platypus is the counterpart. But it's it's relatively cheap. It has torpedoes, which can help deal with... I know we're not talking about water, but it gets included here. I think the duck is A tier. It isn't necessarily a, um, like a core unit. It is a core unit, but, it, but it's very good at what it does. And uh, it can walk under... The, a lot of maps have like little pools of water and stuff. Can can easily flank with that. I think it's really good. So, the gunship here... I, I'm not going to go through every single one, but the Wasp, I've come around a little to the Tier 2 gunships, as a, a lot of air units are very heavy in energy cost, but relatively light in metal. So the gunship can be decent raid defense, 
still a B tier because it's likely your metal could be invested in other places. But in a pinch, or if you notice they have very little anti air, it's a pretty solid choice. And uh, now the Condor, the ra sonar plane, radar and sonar. It's great. It's it's amazing. You're always going to want one of those if you're going anything resembling air. That is the tier two radar aircraft. So, okay, I got to get this one right. Is that the Banisher? Um, I believe it is the mi okay the Banisher heavy missile tank. So very satisfying. I don't I don't agree. It's the it's the counterpart to the starlight i think they have very different roles okay they don't have very you know what fair but the banisher is uh more of a hit and run sort of weapon and whereas the starlight is kind of a essentially a, a slow a turret is how it feels the banisher also i believe can hit air so but i would say it is, it goes in that, in the right spot at the right time, but it is Cortex Vehicle Tier 2, which in general is not as strong in most games as Cortex Bot Lab Tier 2, so you're just going to see a lot of that. All right, the Shuriken. My new favorite, pretty much once I learned how to play, Shuriken's my favorite. The EMP. Uh... Here you go. Paralyzer drone. It stuns units. You pull one of these out. It only costs 58 metal. It's less than double that of a grunt. Builds super quick. And it essentially can turn the entire game. The amount of times recently that I've turned a game with a dozen shurikens. Is, it, it's not a small percent. It is... Now, you, it does take a little bit of micro. You gotta spread it out. Use that fight command. But it can definitely turn the tide. Uh, it is going to be a big caveat of you've got to use it right. Uh, otherwise, you've just wasted your money. But the thing is, it's so cheap, you didn't waste that much, right? Like, and a lot of people will panic if they see any. All right, the Sumo. The uh, Assault Bot. Got a laser. Waddles up. A lot of HP. Solid unit. Solid front line if you don't need to move quickly. Doesn't do anything particularly well. Isn't bad at anything. I like mixing it in with the uh, with the front line. The catapult. Okay, so the catapult is one of the coolest units in the game. It unleashes a massive volley of dozens of rockets in the general vicinity of wherever you happen to target. So what this means is you have to be real goddamn careful with this thing. Because if I see another player firing on my front line because there's a single tick scampering around i'm gonna be upset okay like <laughs> it is really really good at at hitting uh doing a little bit of damage to everything in the area it helps it's essentially your your siege weapon in the late game i'm putting it in b tier because even though i don't i want to discourage people my first instinct was C tier, so people will stop building it on my team um, and hitting me, but I'm going to give them credit. Learn to use the hold fire command and the set target command, which on grid hockey is defense alls, and then I can, I can come around to it. It's really good at its specific job, but it's not like a core unit you always add in. Now the commander. Okay, like, yeah, just put the... It's a commander. It's, can't You literally can't live without it. Uh, the dragon. C tier. I almost want to put in D, but... So, the dragon... Does not hit... This is very, very important, I think. Uh, it does not hit up. I recently learned this. It costs 5,100 metal. All it has are some fancy lasers. It's kind of okay at tanking, but 
it can't even fight like fighters. It is, in my opinion, obscenely expensive for what it can accomplish. Um, in most of the time, if the dragon will do damage, almost anything else would have as well. It, it falls into that role of like, I built a battle cruiser when I could have built like two liberators or a banshee kind of thing. So, uh, like, but a battle cruiser is very cool. But it is, it is bait, in my opinion. It costs more than a fusion reactor to build. Sounds like a D. It, do, but it's not, it's not actively useless. It's fine. It's just not good. Okay. Like, it's not like you've wasted money. All right, so radar vehicle. I'm going to put all the radar vehicles. So this is very important to note. All radar vehicles and bots and all that, they have extra sight range. You don't even build them necessarily for the radar. You build them for the sight. Wait, that is the radar, not the jammer, right? Yeah, the jammer. This is the jammer one. So the additional... Let's, let's see. Sight range is a big deal in the game. And learning to work with it and around it is a huge part of, of winning fights. So, let's see. Wait, what? No, that, that looks wrong. That, that looks wrong. I got it wrong. I got it backwards. It is, this one looks like the radar. I'm just saying. I got it. <laughs> Anyways. So, for example, the let, let's just compare. Like a basic the tiger tank or even the banisher which has the banisher has how much range 800 it only has a sight range of 546 which is a weirdly specific number but I, whereas the the omen radar vehicle has a sight range of 900 so combine one of those with your missile tanks and suddenly you got full range so like I said, though, um, Cortex vehicles are not there. I, in my opinion, they are mediocre <laughs> compared to the bot lab. But anyways, this is the jammer. So the jammer is going to go on the B tier. In fact, hmm, I'm actually going to put the vehicle jammer in the C tier because here's an important point. The jammers cost energy in upkeep. You need to, you're spending energy just to have them exist. Radar vehicles, on the other hand, uh, once you have them, they are don't have upkeep. Uh, it's just passive. So, but jammers do cost energy upkeep. And this is, this screwed me when I added them to my repeat. Um, let's see, I don't think you can see the upkeep here, but I believe it's like 85 per jammer or something like that on the tier two. It is, uh, it, it adds up. You get two or three and you're already cutting heavily into air, your energy. All right, this is the, is it the rascal or the, either way, it's fine. It's a decent scout. Uh, a little clunky to use because you have to be firing forward like most vehicles, but speaking of scouts, honestly, almost every aircraft at tier one has a great place, but it should be support. Uh, it's not like your main. What the hell is that thing? Honestly, I have no idea. What is that? Looks I <laughs> I I don't it's experimental. Is this, is this not part of the current roster of units? It does have like a different background. Oh, hovercraft constructor. So we're avoiding, so just as an aside, the reason we're avoiding hovercraft is there's almost no, there's essentially no units from hovercraft that are straight up better than their counterparts. If you don't factor in the fact they can go over water, right? You could make an argument for things like the halberd, but most of their purpose is on those water maps, and that's like a, a pretty much an entirely different ballgame. So, either way, I'm 
I'm gonna put that down there if we figure out what it is, if it happens to be a unit. I believe this is the alligator or the garpike here. Ah, uh, so the alligator has two. What about the garpike? Um... It has one. So this is a garpike. It is a amphibious tank. Ah, uh, it's... it's... very specific scenarios. It's quite slow. Um, but of course it, it can go underwater, so it has that going for it. Like... It's, uh... not partic... it's DPS is quite weak. It's range as well. Like, it's not... it's... it's... essentially... its only purpose is to pop up on the beaches and surprise them. You know what? What is D tier? Can we figure out what's going to be in the D tier? So that way I have something there by the end? Let's see. Uh, I don't know if anything is. But... It's just there. The Tremor. You know the Tremor, maybe. Wait, what is this? Why is there a heavy laser turret at the top of a tank? I'm, I'm going to put... I, there, I've never... D tears just don't, Legion. So we, we do have a, a little. Some of this is is a bleed over of units. Look on that. I know Sheba's like, I have them all set up perfectly. You could have picked the right units, but instead you're over here debating units that don't even exist. Well, so the incisor is the light tank for for gore. It pales in comparison. It's kind of like the interaction between the grunt and the pawn, where the incisor has more range but less DPS. But the fact that it is a vehicle and its maneuverability is significantly less, I find, like, it just does not stack up. The grunts can move around and, and maneuver, but it the Cortex Tier 1 vehicles get run over. All right, what do we got here? Can you tell I don't play vehicles very often? We're continually going back to the encyclopedia here. Is that the czar? I believe it is, yeah. So, the big kahuna. Yeah, it is. 1650 metal. I don't know if that number is actually. I, I thought it was 13 something. Uh, these are not necessarily perfectly updated. The counterpart to the Fat Boy, aka Friendly Fire Machine. It is, you know, it's very, it's essentially a tier 2.8 unit. Where it's kind of slow, like, it can be good. Usually there are better options, but if you do need to push something as vehicles, it can work in a pinch. It's more of an offensive than a defensive unit, though, because the cannon shots will do plenty of friendly fire. It does not discriminate. <laughs> so, uh, be very careful. It's a, it's another one of those units like, it can be good, but also be careful with that thing. <laughs> it is, it should be in front. With ideally significant support. The opposite, though, the Arbiter, the Rocket Bot. So the Rocket Bot is like a mini cabot, catapult. Um, or is it the Arbalist, which would fit better with the the whole scheme, uh, naming scheme, right? Um, no, Arbiter. You know, Arbalist would make more sense. I'm just saying. I gotta... <laughs> um, oh, it has the little animation of the rocket. <laughs> but... It is 600 metal, and it only has 600 HP. Uh, oh, the Arbalist is a flat gun. Oh, that makes sense. Let's compare. Let's com How much HP does a duck have? 2,300. Just like, you don't think of duck or a fiend, which we're going to get to, which is probably the lightest unit. So it's incredibly fragile and so expensive, you really cut into your potential tech transition. I'm actually... It, I, I'm moving it to the C tier. I've talked myself into it. Why? Because you have Sheldons. We haven't gotten to that. But as uh, core tier 2 bots, you have Sheldons, 
which serve a very similar siege role and do it, in my opinion, much better. Um, so, like, this, there's a lot of other options that are a lot more usable than the incredibly fragile, expensive Arbiter. Especially since the rockets are either very easy to dodge. Uh, it, it slows down the rest of your tech a lot as well if you're using too many of these. Ah, the Hailstorm. The Strategic Bomber. Honestly, so a key part of all air vehicles, aircrafts as they would. When do we get the space units, the Starcrafts, if you will? But it is, I've come around heavily to this. Because well, if you have the energy, I found it's worth just a single bombing run. I'm probably wrong about this. But if you land, if you kill even one unit, and usually it kills a lot more than one unit, or get any of the economy, it's only 310 metal. It does cost 18.5k energy. But a lot of the time when you're going tier 2 air, you end up banking a lot of energy because you're not managing your economy perfectly. Not that I'm talking to anyone in particular. Uh, but usually you can get a few of those. And they are actually cheaper than the gunships. How do planes work on no wind maps? Uh, the electromagnetic resonance of the engines, which they're using uh, from the, the smaller versions of the fusion reactor, actually repels the ground level. And that's why they have to stay so close to the ground, because the resonance level becomes lower as they get further off it. And that's why all the aircraft stay around the same level and don't go up or down and have to like climb up hills and all that. Um, I have a BS and BS, you should trust me. So I'm actually going to put this on the A tier. Because for the cost and the effectiveness, it's an A tier with a huge asterisk. Which is, you got it. So recently, at, I think, well, my suggestion, they added the drag threshold um, setting, which the big issue before was it was you had to hold your mouse perfectly still while you issued an attack or a set target command. But now there's a little bit of a dead zone. Makes it a lot easier to target fire a certain area with the bombers. I found a lot more success immediately after that because my commands don't seemingly spontaneously get canceled. So that's that's quite nice. Anyways, Brenda. I mean the behemoth. Um, so I don't even know if it should be in this category as it is effectively a turret. <laughs> um, it, it essentially use it to tank every shot. It has, I believe, the most health of any unit or anything in the game. It has a speed of 17, which is higher than zero. Uh, um, all, but only just. It also has a D-gun, which doesn't do as much as the... Like, if anything gets close to it, it definitely can... can well... It is not the first, second, or fifth choice, I think. But, if it... it I think in an ultra-late game scenario where you have, like, juggernauts and stuff like that, it has its place. Yeah, few units are outmaneuvered by juggernauts, but the behemoth is one of them. Wait a second, these two look the same. I know, this is the Karganeth. The crab, the rocket crab walker. <laughs> well, we gotta, we gotta go look at the stats again. So, this has some pretty insane DPS. And it is an all-terrain crab. Um, I think, like, there are actually a lot of maps where you can find it. I was thinking C tier, but I'm actually going to bump it up. I've used it a bit, but this is another asterisk. Like, it's very good in specific scenarios. Yeah, I believe this is the experimental version. Like on uh, Coombe Valley, on, in very rare scenarios, probably not Carrot Mountains, in DSDR, um, as well as 
Uh, there's one more. There's one more. Oh, all that glitters. Is, um, it is very good when it's able to crawl around those cliffs. I don't think Bismuth Valley is, is a good example, as most of it's open field with no cliffs around. But, and it has very cool, I really like the rockets. That's the noise. Oh uh, yeah, so it has a lot of uses, but it isn't a core, it isn't a unit you put on the front line or the back line. You put it above the front line, staring down like a creeper from the cliff. The Juggernaut. Honestly, very good. I think it, it really fits its name and its role. A tier. Not, okay, another, like, like everything. It depends. But the Juggernaut does feel truly like an ultimate unit. Um, if you have the economy and you have the resources, it, it can break the siege. It's not so slow that it won't get where it needs to be in time. I think it is far superior in its effectiveness to the Armada Titan at not an obscenely higher cost. Also, it has the option to self-destruct, which one, denies your opponent the ability to resurrect it, and two, is effectively a nuke. Um, it has essentially the radius of a nuke. Yeah, as it as it says there. So, and it strikes fear into the hearts of your enemies when you hear that laser. So, I, I think pretty solid unit. Yeah, the Titan, just, just to compare, the Armada Titan is almost half the metal at five times less DPS and less than half the HP. It just doesn't stack, like... I think three titans can kill a juggernaut if they're like in a ar gladiator arena, but the juggernaut can essentially be the centerpiece of your army. Whereas the titan is more of a support unit for the most part. That doesn't mean Armada doesn't have solid tier three. It's just that the juggernaut is truly a juggernaut. Yeah, don't, well, you don't send him out alone if you can help it, but if there was anyone to send alone. <laughs> the Pounder. So, depending on the day, I might say A tier. I think the Pounder does fall into the very good in specific scenarios, but potentially bait in others. Uh, the Pounder is a, is a Riot tank. Riot is a general category that, to my understanding, means it essentially does AoE and potentially knockback. Uh, which is somewhat rare. But it's very good at dealing with big groups of infantry um, and also lighter tanks. It's just incredibly slow. Um, and it gets outranged heavily by even things like thugs. Um, or, or, and heavier infantry. So it can be a devastating unit, but it has a lot of counters. So it's more of a, you mix it in to your army composition rather than a core unit. All right, anti-nuke. I mean, this is the savior. If you need anti-nuke, just just get it. Like, this, is, this should be in the, like, just, okay, fine. Like, <laughs> don't get nuked. Uh, the commando. Commando is C tier because it's way too much effort to make useful and probably too expensive for it anyways. Like, the Commando has a lot of cool abilities, none of which I've ever really been able to use effectively because they take so much setup time or, or position. But, uh, let me, let me just look at it real quick. Yes, so the Commando, yeah. <laughs> It can build things. It can technically build its own air transport, which is probably something I should try to use a little more. I never actually realized that, but it costs 1,200 metal. Uh, it can build mines and such in their base. Uh, 
it's a uh, it's essentially a MOBA unit, but in, it, it's not particularly difficult to kill if you get anything to actually attack it. So not recommended, and rarely changes the game. Though I'm sure everyone who's really focused on it has one time made it work and feels like it's the best, most special gamer unit ever. Um. Alright, I'm not sure which tank that is. Is that the brute? Is that just the generic brute? No, it's not. That is, a. Uh... Oh, is that? Th That's not the Wolverine. What do we have here? Is it this? The poison arrow? See, I can't tell these tanks apart. Ah, the Quaker, yeah. So, the mobile artillery. I, I think it, it pales in comparison to the Armada artillery. I, I don't know really what it... I think it's partially because... Let, let's see if we can get a comparison here. Um, I'm not sure. I think it is partially just... Uh, it's harder to cover it. I don't know. I don't know why I feel like it's different. Well, the Mauser does more. It has more range. And is cheaper. Wait, wait, is the Mauser... It is just better in every way. Like, I'm looking at the Armada version here. According to these stats, it's less metal. It has more HP and more DPS and more range. Like, <laughs> it's literally just... It's just better in every way uh, besides the energy cost. Yeah, so, like, it's just worse than the Armada counterpart. The speed? 54 versus 51. Okay, sorry. Wait, the speed, which is mostly irrelevant because turn speed is... so. Yeah. Well. This is balanced out by some of the bot lab units. Just... I, it's just not great. It's... It's fine. But it's not great. <laughs> and, uh... Oh my god. Okay, back. Back. <laughs> god, I... Okay. You know there's a compare units button, by the way, which somebody's about to tell me. You can list them together, which I, I'm not intending to do. I just kind of went back. And... <laughs> Alright, so the Lasher. I... Hmm. These things are weird. They do very little damage, but they have a lot of range. Um, yeah, they have a lot of... I think they can outrange most turrets. Masher is only for sight. 620 sight range. I I think it goes into the... Eh, it can be... It, it makes a few in maybe category. But definitely not a core unit. All right, the Trapper. I've come around... It a lot to this one so if you are going vehicles um so this unit has a slight radar jammer uh ability it can build mines uh i don't believe it can ruckling but i i think having one or two once again a very specialty unit that uh is used in very niche scenarios, but is pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Okay, you know what? I, I, I'm convinced, but it's back to B. It's back to... It's not... It's... Uh, uh. It's pretty good. The Sheldon is S tier. The Sheldon, the tier 2 mortar bot, it needs coverage, it needs to be protected, and it is incredibly oppressive when you're not ready to deal with it. It can be countered by just tier 1 spam and all that, but... It is the core core unit, in my opinion. The Sheldon is the the goal of the mid game for the majority of, of Cortex players. No question in my mind that's a S tier unit. It's quite expensive uh, at 410 metal. It has very little DPS, but um, I don't really think it... it the counterpart isn't particularly the Hound. The Hound is much more of a shoring up the line sort of unit for Armada. 
the Sheldon is a core DPS unit. So don't don't let this fool you. But it only has 300 sight range, so it must be combined with things like the radar bots. The Grave Robber is S tier. It can reclaim all the units that suck and resurrect all the ones that don't. And it can repair. It's like it it, it should be S plus. Like gonna. Uh, it's one of having res bots is just like a key part and part of the reason why opening vehicles especially as cortex is difficult because you just don't have access um and that also includes the tier two engineer i believe that's the alligator or the poison arrow let's let's head back ah the poison arrow honestly very solid very solid tank um I've not been disappointed with it the few times I've built it. Um, it's not like... I, in most maps, I don't think it's necessarily the core tank. I don't think it replaces the Tiger as the front line or the Czar. But it is quite tanky. Uh, at 6300. With a relatively high DPS option. So let's let's just real quick compare. Yeah, it does cost a lot more metal than the tiger, uh, without too much benefit, as well as having um, a significantly less speed. Generally, amphibious units have less speed. So I think it, it goes into the B tier. Like if you, eh, yeah, the fiend. All right, just moving on. The fiend. If you played it all, you know fiends. They're the most recognizable unit in the mid game. There's no other unit except for Legion with a flamethrower. And it's so cheap for what it does. And it has the ability to self-destruct doing an extra explosion, which is great to combine with uh, spy bots and stuff like that. You get two fiends in the back line. The game can just end. Uh, it is... And it can be built by Twitchers on the field as well, which just adds to its utility. I don't know if that's like a plus for the Fiend itself, but the fact you can get it in so many different ways, uh, I think is just a plus overall. It's, it's ridiculously fast. If you get close enough, the Flame does a stupid amount of DPS. And, and another benefit is it's so fast, you can use it to kind of draw artillery fire and dodge shots effectively. So, uh, overall, the Fiend, one of the best units and most annoying in the game. Yeah, very cheap for a Tier 2 unit. Alright, the Brute. I'm gonna put it up here. This is the caveat of you've gone vehicles. Tier 2, like, medium tanks, S tier. They're very good. They're, they're, they effect effectively, the medium assault tanks feel like Tier 1.5 units. Um... Overall, they stack up. Now, you need to make sure they don't get overwhelmed, of course, but they are tough to deal with. Uh, and they, I think they're almost always worth it. They're a good core vehicle unit. Puns intended. You notice I'm uh, quite generic. In fact, this should tell you how good the Fiend is, though. Um, the Brute actually costs more metal. <laughs> Though, Brutes can in many ways counter things like Fiends, because, uh, they can outrange them, and also, uh, it's a little... Well, you don't need Tier 2 for it. I think the Brute is the S-Tier vehicle, if there was to be one. Um, that's a Tiger tank, right? So the Tiger Tank pales in comparison to its Armada counterpart, the Bull, which is far more expensive, but serves the purpose of being on the front line. I never realized how little HP the Bull has. That doesn't seem right. The Tiger has more HP than the Bull? I've never found a scenario where the Tigers feel more tanky. Do I know nothing? 
Tiger is the best tank. Well, maybe. Yeah, the DPS of the bull is much higher. It might be that the uh, bull can quite easily just pound its way through, whereas the Tiger struggles more. I mean, it's not going to change my assessment. A tier. Solid core unit. Boring and effective. That's most of my gameplay. Uh, so. And now for the bombs. The bombs, which I've only barely used here. Between the bed bug and the scuttle. These are... So they can roll under the sea. Uh, they do a ton of AoE, and they also chain react with themselves. So I find them to be... they the, When they work out, they look amazing. But... Uh, it is hard to make them work without potentially threatening your own units as well. More than most things. All right. The Skyhook. The Advanced Transport. Honestly, there are almost no scenarios. I, I just haven't found. Like, it's a clunky mechanic transport. And trying to transport anything that requires a heavy transport, even more so. Use them to carry mammoths. Yeah, if a, in a very specific scenario of you don't have, like, a bot lab close enough, and you have to bring one of your... Well, he, unfortunately, you can't carry behemoths. Transport come. Well, that's... I'm putting the tier 1 transport in the A tier. Because it has a ton of utility. It's super cheap. Um, but the tier 2 transport, on the other hand, is significantly more expensive. And while it, it is nothing like the Armada one, which also has the ability to EMP things. So... Um, but the tier one transport is very cheap and effective for what it does. Moving around tier two, uh, and basic units. All right. And is that the alligator now? Have we made it to the alligator? Yeah. Medium amphibious tank. Eh. I mean... If you're in that scenario, you probably should just go with the poison arrow, I think. The Fury, I believe it is called. Mobile anti-air flak. This is probably the best mobile flak. Um, as it is a vehicle. As opposed to, like, out of the bot lab. So it does, it is a bit superior in that. Now, the tier one bombers. Um, I forget what they're called. The... How do I not? <laughs> Whirlwind. Right, whatever. Very good. Very good. Very cheap. Very effective. If you... Once again, the big caveat is if you control them well. I found myself having like five or... If I get an air plant, like five or six bombers. Just to, to kind of move around. Uh, if possible, because usually they don't have enough anti-air to shut them down. But the tier 1 bombers can be very good, and of course you can end games with them. The Shiva, Amphibious Assault Mech. At first I, I thought it was pretty good, but now I think it's amazing. Um, it is essentially a tank on legs with a rocket strapped to the back, which is a part of the reason why the Arbiter the rocket bot um, takes a back seat is because if you get to the tier three, the Shiva is is your core uh, core mech, if you would. I'm putting it in the S tier. It is the default choice once you get to tier three. Um, overall, as it's relatively, it's only fifteen hundred metal. I say only because there are tier two units that cost more than that. I think just the mammoth tank actually but uh you can build a significant amount of them and they benefit from having more of them without overlapping too hard hover tank the cataphract once again on those maps that like they can fight ships directly 
I haven't found it to be particularly useful on ground maps, as it's just not that great overall. But it can do its job well. The radar bot, good. Spy bot, S tier. Spy bot, both for vision for the Sheldons and the EMP ability. The, this is the biggest caveat of you do need to micro them. Like, a lot. They are very micro-intensive. Otherwise, you're better off probably just building some perimeter cameras. The Aggravator. Ah, yes. The Tier 1 Rocket Bot, which is very annoying to deal with. I think it's a B-tier unit. Why? It can be very good in the early game at essentially poking your opponent. You should probably, in many games, think about at least like 5 to 10 of them. But I think a lot of players do overdo it heavily on the, the rocket bots. You can make them useful, but they are quite micro-intensive and vulnerable. Uh, so they are uh, build a few, maybe, uh, but don't rely on them. The mammoth tank. Big boy. Very, like, it's a tank. It's a bot tank. Okay, it's got legs instead of treads. Uh, it's a bot tank. It's good. It's good. It it doesn't... It's 2200 metal, and it doesn't seem like too much to ask for what it does, if you have that economy. So, you can't really tell from this picture here, but the spider. The term... I believe this is it. The all-terrain assault spider. Which, honestly, it, it's a bit costly... For what it is but if it does get close it, it's a fun unit too it is a it is a if you have the opportunity sort of unit um so it goes into that find an opportunity for it, it it's fun to use if you do get there all right the thug s tier most of the early bot lab essentially <laughs> all but the rockets in my opinion s tier Thug is amazing at fighting pretty much anything, including early tier 2. Uh, it's cheap enough that you don't worry too much about losing it. It's tanky enough you can deal with static defense. And it has the ability to potentially fight vehicles. It's also a good enough unit it's worth resing uh, in the fights. It's just a very solid all-around unit. Uh, it's essentially your, your core tier one uh past the grunts all right here you go tremor d tier incredibly intimidating your mini calamity and also it how much does it cost it, it's 1800 metal 49,000 energy which is more than it costs to make an advanced fusion reactor and if you hit every shot, it has massive DPS. But half the time, it ends up hitting your own units if you decide to put, like, so. It is one of the coolest units, but with many turret and turret-like units and buildings, is, in my opinion, almost always bait. Its purpose could be served much better by um, artillery, like Sheldon's or even the Quakers and such, and uh, is much is very likely to provoke a response from either team. Uh, the tremor I've never really seen the tremor be the deciding factor, except for baiting the opponents into trying to kill you and probably succeeding because you just spent so many resources on a unit that only uh, drizzles down artillery. All right, the Nighthawk fighter very good the tier two fighters are actually honestly i'm gonna put it in s tier incredibly good at its job you just they just slice they have a huge damage bonus obviously against air or not even i don't even know if it's necessarily a damage bonus or it's just they're very good it's only a hundred metal it's 633 dps against air you get four or five of them you bring down well uh, maybe a bit more to bring down a dragon. Actually, dragons have no anti-air, but... <laughs> they are... 
I mean, that's your anti-air. Your best anti-air is direct air to air as opposed to ground to air, uh, if possible. And it really isn't that costly to get a dozen or so of them if you really need it. I will say the tier one fighters actually go into the A tier as opposed to um, the S tier because they just don't have as much. Uh, cost, they cost almost as much metal as the tier two. Uh, they're three quarters for a quarter of the DPS. Obviously, it's the difference in, in tier one versus tier two. Um, but it just doesn't have nearly as much efficiency in the later game. Still very good, but... I thought we already had the radar bot. Oh, wait, this was the jammer. This was the bot jammer. You know what? It stays in the A tier. Even though it does have that upkeep, it usually gets combined with things like Sheldon's, and radar jamming is all but required for Sheldon's to maximize their effectiveness. So, But the radar bot... A tier. Uh, it is very cheap, even though it has quite a high build cost, but it provides a ton of vision and combines incredibly well with your uh, average tier 2 bot lab unit. The vehicle radar, I mean, I'm, I'm always going to be a big fan of the uh, radar, but we've got the negotiator, which is the rocket tank. It's kind of the equivalent of the, the arbiter, which is a decent option for breaking siege positions. I think it has a better role with the vehicles than it does like comparing it to the Arbiter and the bot lab, even though it has a kind of similar uh, long-range siege role. And then the artillery tank, uh, the Wolverine. Very solid. This is the most definitive way. So rocket bots can be countered in a lot of ways. Heavy laser turrets just by uh, enough units in general. The artillery tanks have more range. Uh, they do have to be facing forward. That is the hardest part with the artillery tanks. But they do a great job of kind of poking your opponent into action. Uh, and I, I think they fill that role very well. So there you have it. Uh, your definitive Cortex tier list. And beyond all reason. Your S tier filled with a bunch of generic units who are very good at their jobs. The standouts, I think, are the Shuriken and the Spybot. But otherwise, pretty much your most basic units that are are very simple to understand. Um, I think once you get the hang of both the Sheldons and like the Fiend-Sheldon combo, as well as the strength of the Shivas, you, you got a solid late game going. And then the A tier is full of units that can fill in. They might be mixed in uh, if you're going that direction, or maybe are worth getting, even if you're not. Whether it's the anti-air stuff, ducks, mammoth tanks, uh, some of the radar juggernauts. The B tier is very, maybe it's great, or it could be useless. <laughs> like some of the amphibious units, the bombs, uh, the rocket bots. Like, it, they have their place, but it's not in every game or every scenario at all. In fact, probably less than half of them, though, up to that amount. And then the C tier is, you better know why you're building this thing, otherwise I'm questioning it. Like, the dragon, the the amphibious tanks, uh, hover tanks, the heavy transport, the commando, like, what are you doing over there? And then the tremor, which makes your teammates tremor with rage as they wonder what you're trying to accomplish besides friendly fire and wasting your resources. And, of course, you have the whole cast of seaplanes and uh, hover hovercraft there, which do only show up on a handful of maps. But The incisors. Yeah, like, the incisors can be okay. They just are not something to rely on. They definitely don't have as much longevity as, as the Blitz. Uh, I think of all the units on the C tier, the incisor is, is clearly the one that, that stands out as maybe uh, more of but... I wish the behemoth was more of a... I, I actually don't. I'm not a big fan of the... Essentially, defend this turret. 
or bare or near turret. So it's a C plus. The inside is a C plus. It's not a B. It's not a B. It's a C plus. Um. But there you go. There you have it. So uh, tell me why I'm right and how I how you've come around and how now you're gonna win all of your games with this knowledge. Like, subscribe. Thank you for uh, watching. Uh, good luck, have fun. I'll see you next time. Stay unreasonable.